The London hard fork that include EIP 1559 is scheduled for July. EIP 1559 is the most controversial and has been discussed for a long time. Now, a lot of people don't know that London hard fork is not all about 1559. In fact, there are actually five separate EIPs or Ethereum improvement proposals. So, what do you need to know as a user or you as a miner? Stay tuned to find out more. London half fork changes are only temporary and it's only monetary in the lead up to 2.0 overhaul. Every once in a while, Ethereum will package a few updates together, then schedule a day for everyone to switch over. They are called half fork because the new version of the code is not compatible with the old version. So miners have to change their software they're running in order for the upgrade to happen. If some of them don't change, they will have two versions of Ethereum running at the same time. If M1 has switched over to the new one, then the old one will cease to exist. But with this London hard fork, it's going to be very controversial because it directly reduces the money miners make. Since miners buy expensive hardware, hoping to be the first one to solve the complex algorithm, while we pay expensive gas fees, these gas fees are actually going to the miners. So of course, there's going to be a conflict of interest. Currently, every time someone makes a transaction or interacts with a smart contract on Ethereum, they must decide on a fee, which is more or less a guessing game. To push through a transaction quickly, you can set a higher fee or by ensuring miners will include it in a block. If you offer a lower fee, your transaction will likely to wait until miners are less busy processing high paying transactions. So speed is important in several instances, including when trading upon Ethereum based decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap, where token prices can swing rapidly, which means traders lose money if they wait. That's why we have EIP 1559. Basically, instead of one gas fee, they're proposing two fees which are base fee and inclusion fee. The base fees is set completely by an algorithm and it changes depending on network congestion. The maximum difference from block to block is predictable which allows wallets to auto-set the gas fee. It's expected that most users will not have to manually adjust gas fee, even in periods of high network activity. The base fee will be banned rather than going to the miners. This is certainly amazing for users, but it's gonna upset miners. The inclusion fee is a tip for the miners, but it's optional only if you want the transaction to go through fast. It's nothing like the gas fee because even if you tip a very small amount, your transaction is still being processed within the next few blocks. It will be able to do this because of its neat feature of the flexible block sizes. So instead of a fixed block size that limits the number of transactions that can be included, block size will increase or decrease depending on the state of the network congestion with a maximum block size of 25 million and a target of 12.5 million. As I just said, this is directly reducing the earning of miners. In fact, miners grouped together and launched a marketing campaign against the EIP 1559. It started with only a several minority pools followed by majority pools including Ethermine and Spark pool. Over 60% of the Ethereum network's hash rate is now against the proposal. Now, some might worry about 51% attack. This means, for example, preventing transactions from going through or double spending the tokens. However, this is very unlikely in my opinion, and here's why. Why would miners hold an attack while it would crash the price of the token they are holding? That just doesn't make sense to me. And if you've done some research, Vitalik specifically said that he's not worried about 51% attack at all because if some miners leave, new ones can come in. Now, what if miners choose to stay in the old network? What will happen? The answer is simple. Miners will then have to launch a new altcoin, something similar to what happened with Ethereum Classic. This is because Vitalik also wrote this EIP 3554, known as the difficulty bomb delay, so that we can all move to Ethereum 2.0 when ready, rather having some people still hold on to the 1.0 chain. 
is a design that will encourage miners to switch to 2.0. This will raise the difficulty level of Ethereum's proof of work puzzles, which result in longer block times and effectively cut the rate of ETH rewards for miners. Seeing as this mechanism increases the mining difficulty exponentially over time, this will eventually lead to something known as the Ethereum Ice Age. This is when the Ethereum chain becomes so hard to mine and it becomes unattractive for miners to do so. This this is ingenious because miners have to fork either way so they can't just stay in the old chain. In short, this fork is happening whether miners like it or not. But for most of us who are ETH holders, this is nothing but good news because this will be the first time ever that Ethereum will possibly be deflationary, which also means our value of Ether will rise over time. These upgrades pave the way to make a constant reality. In addition, this feature leans more user-friendly and coincides with a search in network activity. Ethereum's transitions to 2.0 garners interest due to the promise of low fees and the switch to proof of stake that will up security and lean more environmentally friendly. As NFTs become more mainstream and more users interact with the Ethereum ecosystem, these two aspects become even more crucial to network functionality. As the Ethereum network continues its evolution, only time can review how the system's new functionality lines up for miners, users and developers. And that's pretty much sum up everything I want to say in this video. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Consult a professional investment advisor before making investment decisions. This video is only for educational purposes or entertainment purposes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button and share this video anywhere on social media. Seriously, this will really help support the channel, especially when YouTube is changing the algorithm. So I will really, really appreciate if you can simply just like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any suggestion regarding video content, comment down below and I'll see you very soon. Take care.